Hi and welcome to this next lecture on data structures and algorithms. We will continue our discussion on shortest path algorithms. In fact, we will continue our discussion for shortest path with a fixed source. However, today we will discuss an algorithm that can deal with negative weighted edges. Recall that we discussed the Dijkstra's algorithm which operates under the constraint that no edge weights are negative. So, the Bellman Ford algorithm it computes shortest paths from a single source fixed source to all other vertices in a weighted directed graph. However, Dijkstra's algorithm does not work for negative weighted edges. It is a greedy algorithm that makes use of the optimal substructure property. Bellman Ford solves the problem of negative weighted edges, but is slower than Dijkstra's algorithm that is the price being paid and the running time is order of number of vertices is to the number of edges. So, what is the idea? So, let us understand the algorithm with a simple example. So, we will try and illustrate the working of the Bellman Ford algorithm through an example. So, let us say we have a graph with the source is We will consider a purely directed graph. Let us give names to these vertices V1, V2, V3, V4, V5 and V6. We will also give um, names to the edges uh, um, and their weights W1, W2, W3, W4, W5, W6. It also helps to have an additional edge here to make the graph a directed cycle graph. So, this let us say this is W7. So, the Bellman Ford algorithm iterates through all the edges of the graph and for every edge it determines the weight on the two nodes that it is part of. So, course, if you have the edges to be undirected, it is possible that the shortest path crosses that particular edge in either way, in either direction. However, if the edge is directed, you expect the shortest path from one node to another node, if at all, to occur only along the direction that is permitted by the edge. So, the idea behind the Bellman Ford algorithm is well, initially all vertices are infinitely far away from the source. The source is of course, a distance 0 from itself. Now, you iterate over all edges for each edge E, you are going to check if so let us say E is going from U to V you will check if the distance the shortest part distance to V existing distance is greater than or equal to the distance to U plus the weight on the edge UV. If this is the case then you update DV to this new found shortest path which says I am going to look at the shortest path to U and then um, append the edge U V to the shortest path to U. So, this is the basic idea and you are going to do this for every edge. How many times will you have to do? Well, when you start the iterations, initially you determine that for V1 and V4 or that is the edges W1 and W4, you are able to update the weights for V1 and V4 to say W1 and W4 respectively. However, for all the other vertices other than source of course, in the first iteration over all the edges, there is nothing to update. 
However, in a subsequent iteration, you will also update the shortest path for V2 say which is W1 plus W2 and that for V5 which is W4 plus W5. So, you will have to iterate over all the edges number of times that equals the maximum number of hops to a node from S. So, number of times to iterate over all the edges, what I mean by this is this iteration, this is the width of graph which is num max number of hops from the source node S to any vertex say this let us say V, well by the way we do not need the V 6, so I am just going to this V 3. So, this is going to be V 3. So, uh, the complexity is basically number of edges into this maximum number of hops, but I will convince you that this maximum number of hops in the worst case actually happens to be number of vertices minus 1. I will construct an example to show this. So, let us consider a simple linear graph S goes to V 1 goes to V 2 goes to V 3. So, the, my first scan over the edges I will be able to update V 1, the second scan I will be able to update V 2, the third will be V 3. So, there are four vertices and I need three scans over all the edges till I am able to reach V 3 and update its shortest path. So, I can update the shortest path for V 3 when the shortest path for its immediate neighbors are updated. Let us look at the actual algorithm as pointed out the first thing you do is iterate over all the vertices set the depth of every vertex the shortest path to depth to infinity the predecessor for all the nodes is not set, but the predecessor for the source is null and the depth for the source is 0. And then as suggested we are going to iterate over all the edges this inner loop iterate over all the edges and we are going to do that for a number of times that equals number of vertices minus 1. So, recall that this is in the worst case the so called width of the graph. And then it is a check that we already anticipated if d u plus w, w is the weight of edge E, if this happens to be less than the existing shortest path distance to V, then you update the shortest path distance at V. You also update the predecessor of V to point to U. So, this is already motivated and explained. What is the part here at the end? Well, so far we have assumed that our graph is a directed acyclic graph. What if the graph has cycles and is therefore not a directed acyclic graph. Abbreviated of as DAG. Even in the case that the graph has no directed edges, it might just have cycles. And here is a test. If the shortest path can be further reduced even after V minus 1 iterations, then it appears that there is 
a cycle that is there is a path from S to a node any particular node that involves a cycle. Let us illustrate this with an example. So, we have S V 1 let us say this is weight 5, uh, this is say 4 to V 2, V 3 minus 3, we already pointed out the negative weight edges are possible and say minus 2, minus 1. Now, as you update the weights originating with S 0, V 1 is 5, V 2 is 9, uh, V 3 is 6 and then you have 4 and then you have uh, minus 1, 3, However, the next iteration when you update V2, you will get 7 and then you will be able to update V3 to 4 and that at uh, this node V4, we are able to update the weight for V4 further and get it to 2 and then at V1 get it to 1. You could do this again, go over this, uh, 1 plus 4 is 5. 5 minus 3 is 2, 2 minus 2 is 0, 0 minus 1 is minus 1 and so on. So, just by going around this loop you can actually get very very uh, negative weighted uh, paths from S to all of these nodes. So, what is a characteristic here? Well, it turns out that this cycle itself has negative weight. What is the weight uh, of all paths on the cycle? Minus 1 plus 4 plus minus 3 plus minus 2, the whole weight is basically minus 2. So, the more you go around in this loop, the more you will be able to reduce the shortest path and this you can do ad infinitum. So, this is what we are checking. If after so many iterations, if you are still able to reduce the shortest path uh, distance to any particular node, then you basically cannot find a shortest path. So, just return a false. So, that is what we see here, returns false for negative weight cycle. Let us see this in action. We start with infinite weighted shortest path to all the nodes. In the first iteration over all the edges, we find that only the immediate neighbors of the source can be updated and we have done that. Then again we look at all the edges, we are only able to update now the immediate neighbors of these nodes that were updated. So, it turns out that B is also neighbor to A and you are able to get shortest path to B through A. So, this is the latest. We continue our bookkeeping, find that the shortest path to C and D has been updated, C and E has been updated and then to G and it turns out that you can actually find another shortest path G through C and in fact this also lets you update shortest path to E through G. So, let us analyze the Bellman shortest path algorithm. We will look at two characteristics, one is its correctness and the other will be its complexity. So, we prove the correctness of this algorithm by claiming the following loop invariant. And we state that for every vertex V within k hops from the source node S, the value dV is indeed the shortest path from S after k outer iterations. 
So, we are claiming that at the kth iteration of this outer loop, the value that gets updated in dv at the end of this kth iteration, dv contain the correct value, the shortest path. And it is easy to show that at initialization this is correct because the only node that is within 0 hops from the source itself and indeed the depth of uh, the shortest path of source is set to 0. The next iteration we can easily see that we only deal with the immediate neighbors of the source and they get updated correctly. In fact, the maintenance can be easily proved because we know that to get to a vertex with the, which is k plus 1 hops from the source s, you need to go through a vertex which is within k hops from the source s. So, maintenance can be proved with the key observation. that a vertex at k plus 1 hops from s is reached through vertex at k hops from s this can therefore extend even at termination. What about time complexity? Well, the runtime complexity is again straightforward as we had anticipated, we are going to iterate over all the edges for a fixed outer iteration and the number of outer iterations is basically the number of vertices or out of the number of vertices. We have actually split the cost here for each of the uh, if blocks and the for loops and so on, but it is essentially number of edges into number of vertices. The final check is only order of number of edges, which is basically to check for negative weight cycles. So, overall complexity is order of V e is the dominating term. Thank you.